Well, maybe I'll start now. So, welcome to the second talk on calculating number theory. <coughs> so, uh, so let's maybe start by recalling what we talked about last time. So, uh, I'll be working with a number field F, which is a finite extension of Q. The so degree here is N. So the most important concept we introduced last time is the analog of the integers for general number field. Uh, it's called ring of integers, OF. So it consists of elements in the bigger field number in the big number field F, such that alpha is a zero of a monic polynomial uh, with coefficients in, in Z. So that's a, somehow a better way to define what the random interest is in general context. And it's independent of the choice of the generator of F over Q. <coughs> and let's also recall that what kind of important thing why we want to study Number theory because I kind of we kind of need it's kind of just by the example we talk about uh, Fermat's last theorem we need some sort of factorizations like like understanding somehow the factorization or like excuse me why remember the first step we try to kind of approach the Fermat's last theorem was to factor things like this. And then, of course, later on, we want to factor z and x and y later on. But this is the factorization exists in this random vendor z adjoins zeta p, where p is a prime, odd prime. So that brings us to the today's topic, which is to understand the factorization in the random vendor OF. Okay, so let's recall that over z, we have a really good, one of the most important theorem about z is that every integer, maybe every in positive integer, to avoid the negative, positive integer, is the product uh, of prime numbers. in a unique way. Huh? Up to permutation. I'll try to write bigger. Okay? So this is the unique factorization in Z. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is this property. Talking about a, a case, uh, talking about the case it fails. Let's talk about the case when it doesn't fail. Like, say, let's give an example where you still have a unique factorization and see what that means. I'm going to consider z a joint i, the, the imaginary number i. This is going to be a, this is a unique, <coughs> a unique factorization domain. Uh, this the reason is I think you learned this from abstract algebra. That's because the i is an Euclidean domain. Oh, sorry. Let's spell excuse me. Uh, sorry. And this implies it's a PID, principal idea of domain, and therefore it's a unique factorization domain. <coughs> well, let's see. Let's. Let's make it more explicit of what the factorization like in Z adjoint I. I think this is somehow the first example of the ring of interest of a number field. And I think we should understand it by all means. But here's a fact. Every element 
let me call it x in zi is the product of prime element. I'll list the prime element later on. <coughs> up to uh, pro up to permutation. And up to multiplication by a unit. In my case, it's just plus minus one plus minus i. Let me give an example. A really quick example. Quick example. So if two, I mean the the most obvious way you can think of it is like this. Right. One minus i, one plus i. But you can also write it as uh, minus i minus one. You can put minus i on both sides because so they're considered essentially the same thing. And uh, by some sort of in some sense, you can also write this 1 plus i squared times negative i. Let's think about it. So 1 plus i squared is 1, i squared is negative 1. So 1 cancel is negative 1. So, so this, is, uh, this is 2i. So 2i times minus i is 2. So maybe this is a better way in some sense. You write 2 as uh, a prime square times a unit. This is somehow I mean, a more intrinsic definition. So, so now I'm going to list all the primes. All prime elements in Zi. There are, well, 1 plus i is one of them. But whenever I list a prime element, I implicitly say, OK, 1 plus i, this is also a, you know, associated to that. This is also another prime element. And also one plus uh, one plus i times i, and also minus i times one plus i. Uh, okay. So, but I, later I'm gonna later I'm gonna only write the first one one plus i, but not the the other three. Okay, because they're all like off by our units. But I want to point out the norm of all these numbers, which is two. <coughs> So by definition, I recall that norm is just 1 plus i, 1 minus i in this case. So it's 2. OK? So what are other primes? If p is a prime uh, number, whenever I say prime number, I really mean an actual prime number in the in the integers of type 4k plus 3. So this is actually a prime element in this bigger, <coughs> bigger ring, zi. Again, whenever I write p, I mean uh, minus p i p and minus i p there. And the norm of this number p, because then they're both invented, it's just p, the number p itself, so it's p squared. Thirdly, uh, so I'm gonna have some, so for P a prime of type prime number, or he will call it rational prime. Same thing. Uh, I can have something called u plus i v, where u and v are given so that uh, their sum of their squares is p. So the theorem Gauss that every prime of type 4k plus 1 is a sum of two squares. So u plus iv is one of, is, is going to be a prime in zi. And also u minus iv is going to be a prime in the adjoint i. And uh, of course this one you can the first one you can also multiply by plus minus one plus minus i and the second one also. So there are essentially except as if you want to find a prime that is whose norm is p, there are eight of them. Or like this one will produce four, the other one will, will produce four. But there are essentially two classes, u plus iv and u minus iv, up to multiplication by this unit. <coughs> and this theorem will say that x will be equal to some u, which is belongs to plus minus one plus minus i 
times 1 plus i to some r plus i times p1 beta 1 pr beta r. So these are 4k plus 3 type primes. I'm just writing out in a, in a straightforward way. And then I'll have times, okay, u plus i b 1. Rs. <coughs> B, S. So let's give it some power of gamma 1, gamma S. And then I can have some U1 minus I, B, 1, say delta 1, U, S minus I, B, Okay. So that's a complete factorization of an element inside ZI. This is up to a unit. Instead, oh well, like, like you can you can choose here. You can choose not to use one plus i as a representative of this this class. You can choose another representative to put it here. You can still get a similar uh, factorization, except that u will be changed a little bit up to uh, up to you know whatever you change here, you just make the changes on the first factor basically. Okay, so that's what the unique factorization means in this. In this ring of thousand meters. And then questions? Yes? Do we know if there are fields for which the ring of integers is the Gaussian integers? Oh, so the field is just Q adjoint I, right? The fractured field of this. So, yes, that's a good point. I should have said this. <laughs> so, this is my F, and OF is the adjoint I. And more generally, if we start with a ring like this, do we know whether we can find a field that has this as its ring of integers? Uh, Is that I think possible? theoretically it's better to go from number field back down. I agree. From yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Say that. I, I think logic goes that way. Would... Yeah, you have to make a sense of what you mean by a ring like this. If it's Z adjoining some algebraic numbers, you just have to go adjoin, do the same thing, adjoining that to Q. But then, of course, this ring may not be the ring of integer for that number field. So if it's not a ring of integer of that field, it may not enjoy the property I'm going to talk about later on. So I guess my question then is, what's the most general result we have for pick a ring and show that you can find a field who has that ring as its ring of integers? Take a fraction. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Oh no, ring of F ring of integers. Somehow, if you think about the ring of integers, it has some sort of a relative. If you think about it really, it has some sort of relative feature. Yeah. Right. You have this F has to be over some Q, and you have some sort of base Z. Mm -hmm. Something like this. I mean, if you see, look at the definition of OF, it requires for not have coefficient Z. So uh, what it amounts to show, uh, say is that, uh, oh, I guess there are, there's some concept of incoming algebra that, that the ring is, algebra, uh, is uh, integral, integrally close. So that could be a kind of a generalization of this in general rings. Sorry. We can talk about that later more. Okay, so now I'm going to get, come to a non UFD. Uh, it took me a long time to decide which field I want to take this example. I'm going to take a very complicated one. I hope you don't mind too much. You can get it, you can take an example of negative 5. I'm going to go with this complicated one. Okay, so my OF, note that negative really nice comes to 1 mod 4. I deliberately want to take this one so that the ring of integer is a little bit complicated. Let's do fine. So, I want to give a factorization. So 2 times 5 is 10. 
But I want to say this is the same as this. Let me write that one more step. So this is what four one minus nineteen gives me thirty nine. So this is forty. And then this is ten. Okay. So we have factorization like this. As it turns out that 2 and 5 and all these things and these two are irreducible elements. Namely, this cannot be factored further into two elements which are not units. Maybe I can prove the one for you. Or maybe, maybe, or, okay. Maybe I'll leave the next test for you to prove. <laughs> but I want to point out that this is not sort of very straightforward except in the sense that uh, we have these four elements, which are, they're all irreducible elements. Somehow we have this 10 factoring into irreducibles in two different ways. Okay? So that means it's not going to be a unique factorization domain. Because I mean, like you have two different ways of factoring things. I want to say that a similar, similar statement. For example, you can do two times five equals to you know. You, there's obvious thing. You can factor it like this in in the i. That's not contradictory. that ZI is a UFD. <coughs> because what you can do is you can further factor this. Because really, I mean, like, 2 times 5 can be factored as, let's move the numbers in a good way. So 1 plus I, 1 minus I, that's 2. 1 plus 2I, 1 minus 2I, so that's 5. And the other two, you can tr kind of trust me, because and obviously, I did this exercise before I come. <laughs> okay? So somehow these two... Somehow, like, like in, in ZI, I guess, this number 2 and 5 are not irreducible. They can be further factored. The reason they've got 2 times 5 equals to 3 plus i times 3 minus i is because each one of them has some sort of common factor. And if you had further factor, they would, they would just be the same after swapping the factors. So this is no contradiction to the I being a, U, a UFD. Whereas over here, this 2 and 5, they cannot be further factored as in the adjoined I. So that's somehow one reason. But now, uh, well, let's think about this. Again, how do we fix the problem? I mean, let's maybe go back and think about, think about the Fermat's last theorem. We really want a factorization to work in order to prove it, because we really want to take advantage of this, you know, things that are being co-prime and then you know, to further factor. But how, what do we do? To fix this. In, 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 in this OF. So here's, here's the idea. So let me let me go back to Z. Let's talk a little bit about ideal theory. Uh, the word ideal, of course, you learn it in the ring theory. You know, it's sort of you know some subsets close under multiplication uh, by the elements in the ring. But then I think the first time it shows up is to solve this particular this question. How do we solve this issue? Uh, I think. Somehow, as Keith explained to me, it was first introduced uh, to somehow sort of say some sort of ideal this stuff that that somehow will represent the I guess that will represent the common the GCD of two and this factor and two and the other factor and so on. Somehow later on, I guess they have a more concrete way to write it down. So that's what you've learned in the ring theory. So let's go back to Z and see what happens. So you have to, 
What's the idea of gen generating by two integers, m and n? Well, just think about this. What's the idea of generating by four and six? In four and six, of course, there's a two there. If you have four and six in the ideal, the ideal is closed under addition. So that's definitely two there. So once you have two, you don't need four and six because they are just multiple of two. So it's just the same as two. And if you think a little bit more, you realize that the, the ideal generated by M and N is just a GCD of M and N. Generated by GCD of M and N. So really, in some sense, you should, you should really think that taking xy is sort of the same as taking gcd of x and y. At least this is what's happening in the, in the number field. That's somehow the intuition I want you to, to have. So, so also I want to recall the ideal multiplication. Maybe multiplication of ideals. So say my i is the ideal generated by a bunch of numbers, and j will be the ideal generated by another set of numbers. Find the numbers. But it could be infinite. It works in the name. Then I can multiply two ideals together. This will be the ideal generated by the pairwise product of the generators of the two ideals. So pairwise product. Of generators. Okay? So let's see. Let's back to our example. Maybe I'll just come back a little bit more here. Let's see. Let's cover this, I don't need this anymore. So let's think about this situation a little bit. So let's go back to the to the case when it's not a contradiction. So what happens is that this two and five each further factors into I guess a common factor of two with if you think it's kind of like common factor common yeah, common divisor with two and three plus and common divisor of three with three minus i, or something like this. And we're gonna somehow have that idea here. I wanna say, over here, this is because two, instead of writing the element, I'm gonna write the ideal generated by two, is The reason that we have this equality is because there's some factor of two and each of the factors on the right-hand side has. And two is a product of those two factors. And the five <coughs> is sort of the same thing. And same for the other, on the other side. I'm not sure if I want to complete writing all of this. It's five. <coughs> Sorry, I'm already here. If these equalities were true, then of course this product this equals the other one seems to be obvious. In the sense that you know it factored into four different factors, it just you know it grouped them differently. So maybe uh, for today, let's just sort of check one. So maybe I'll just check this one as an exercise. But let's just do it here. And the rest of you can work out to you as an exercise too. I should work out the numerics. Okay? So you understand that, right? I mean, like if each of the factor has this, then this equality is just basically regrouping these four factors in different ways. So let's check this equality here. So what do I have? I have five. This 
So I need to take pairwise product of these generators. I have 25 here. I have 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times this factor is 5 minus 5. Yeah, this is the part I don't like about this example, which is <laughs> it's a bit tricky to write all this. And then the last one is this. Okay? You have a priori four generators. Later down, I'm gonna, of course, I want to show this is really generated by five. So I have to compute each of the factors. To care about it. Start with the last one. So this is what? This is uh, actually one minus negative 30. Over four, this is just 10. So last one is 10. Again, in an ideal, you know, once you have 25 in the ideal, you have 10 in the ideal, then you have their difference, and you have their difference of the difference, whatever. So once you have 25, then you definitely have five in there. For example, it's like 25 <coughs> minus 10 times five. It's definitely an ideal. And you can put everything else in here, if you want. But now you realize once you have five, you don't need anything else. Because uh, 25 is the power of, uh, excuse me, it's a multiple of 5. This is also a multiple of 5. This is also a multiple of 5. This is 10. It's also a multiple of 5. So therefore, it's just 5. So in the idea, once you have 5, you don't need, like in this idea, once you have 5, you don't need anything else. So therefore, we verify the equality here. That, you know, the idea generated by 5 is really the product of these two factors. And the, by the same argument, you can verify the other three equalities. So I hope to use this example as, as a way to convey that using factor A, so maybe I should write it. so upshot. Here's, here's upshot. I want to factor into ideals instead of So instead of really factoring a number into a sort of product of prime elements, you, write, you want to factor things into prime ideals. So this is precisely uh, what Dedigan proved. Uh, so I said, this OF is a, of course, Dedekin didn't say it's a Dedekin domain. <laughs> we later call it Dedekin domain. What it means is that it's, a, it's, a, it's an integral domain in which every ideal, excuse me, every non zero proper ideal. I. So what these two means is that basically you don't want i equals zero or i equals everything. So uh, you want to exclude these two cases. Uh, can be factored well uniquely. But later on, whenever I say uniquely, I really mean unique up to permutation of the factors as the product of prime ideals. And also, I want to say that, if you know what it means, every prime ideal, uh, every non-zero prime ideal, is a maximum ideal. So, so in the example here, what, what I have in this example, what I have is the factorization of five, the ideal five, into it turns out these two are prime ideals. So this is one of the factorizations you see. So again, I want to emphasize the abstract is that you want to factor factor things into ideals instead of elements. 
So for number fields, for some purpose, working with, like ideals are better to work with than talking about elements. Okay? Are there questions? Comments? Okay. So now let's talk more about the factorization. I wanna bring back to this relatively general setup of my z and bring the vendor OF on top of that. Okay? So inside of here, Z, I have a prime number P is a book. Whenever I write here, P is a prime number. So one of the important things I want to understand is that what does how does this P factor? The ideal generated by P. What kind of avatar of the element P in the bigger ring? You can also write it as p times oh, elements in OF. This is how you define the ideal generated by p. By the unique fractionation property in the Dedekind domain, or like well, the Dedekind theorem, this factors as a product of a bunch of prime ideals. Okay? So you have these factorizations. So, I'm going to introduce a theorem now to give you how to compute this factorization in practice. So the earlier example we did, let me just put it here, is that I want to factor five inside, like, I mean, this is factoring five inside this, this ring of integer for, for Q or root of negative 39. So this is a factorization. This is somehow the same factorization in the adjoint, I guess, one plus root of negative 39 over 2. So how do we get this in practice? So assume that say my field, like number field is generated by one element. For most of the case, I'm going to take my alpha to start to this is also alpha integer. Just, just for example, in my case, I can take root of negative 39. And there's a technical condition that I want P to not divide the difference between in the index. Index, excuse me. Difference is fine. Nobody calls it the difference. I call it difference. <laughs> okay. That contradicts your statement. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> I've ever known before. before. Okay, the index of P. <laughs> the adjoint R. Inside the lab. Why do I make this assumption? Well, it's because somehow, like, although OF is more canonically defined, but in practice it's really easier to work with Z adjoint R. So I want to, so I want to, I guess, for practice is easier to work with Z adjoint R in some sense. So, so there's this condition here. So suppose that, uh, let's see, so let HX uh, with coefficient Z is the minimum polynomial of alpha and h bar x is just hx mod p it's a little inside fpx this is a reduction of hx mod p and suppose that now I have a Polynomial with coefficient in the finite field fp. Hx itself is reducible in, as a polynomial over z, but the reduction may be further reducible. So suppose this is equal to h1x with some factors. H g x e to the g. Uh, it's a factorization. Got an overline of the HG. Pardon me? The overline of the HG. Oh, thank you. Okay? Yes? Is this a different H bar from the one we just defined, or is it the same? It's a defined H bar to be HX mod P, and this will further factor as okay. given. 
And you can see that I already kind of hinted that these, these numbers are going to be the same. Okay? Then, this P, then the POF, what we factor as an ideal which looks like this. Uh, R to the E1, <laughs> P, comma, H, G, R, E, G. I mean, I, I wrote here without, uh, I, I have it here without saying that, you know, these HIs are different. <coughs> Otherwise, you screw them together. So then this would factor as this, where H i x is any lift of H i x bar. So what the last line means is that you have this polynomial where coefficients in lifts in F p. But of course, you want to write something <laughs> in, in, in integers to represent that. So this hi will be some way of representing that. So that's a factorization. Let me give an example. Quickly come down to an example. So let's see. So let's just take this one. Take this complicated metric quadratic field. Is it really complicated? So I want to take alpha to be not the generator of the ring of interest. I, I just because for a lot of time later on, as, as as we talked about last time, this OF may not be generated by one element, anyways. So I just pick some alpha in OF. Then we, as we talked about last time, that the difference of the actual ring of interest, the difference again, the index of the adjoining of negative 39 in the actual ring of integer is 2. You're missing the 1 plus root of negative 39 over 2. But I want to say, for example, I want to take p equals 5. So we're fine here. As long as my prime does not divide the index here, we're fine to use this theorem. Now I'm going to use this theorem to calculate the factor of 5 inside OF. So how do I do that? Well, in this case, the, the minimum polynomial of root of negative 39 is obvious, x squared plus 39. <laughs> right? So now I want to multiply 5. So when I multiply 5, this is, what's the best way? Minus 1. And it does factor as x plus 1, x minus 1. Uh, in F five. This is a brilliant design. Can't wait properly. So okay, so the, the reduction of H X by mod five factors X plus one and X minus one. So now my theorem tells me that this ideal generated by five would factor as five uh, with alpha, well, actually, let me just write it, alpha plus one and five alpha minus one. So that's what the theorem says. So whatever, however you, your minimum polynomial mod <coughs> P factors, you sort of have to factor the prime in the same way with this sort of recipe here. And of course, in my case, it's just, I'm just rewriting what I have. Okay. That's how you get the factorization. And, uh, good? So that's how you do it. But like basically, you pick the minimum poly polynomial, the generator, and then plot prime p, and you factor that polynomial, and you're done. And then for, the, for those who are very careful, and you can say, wait a minute, this is different from what we had earlier. They look a little bit different. So what's going on? Right? I mean, this looks a little bit, well, close enough. <laughs> but looks a little bit different. Right? So 
So I want to say that they are actually really the same factorization, except they look a little different. So let's see, what's this obvious? So this, this, this idea here is definitely inside the first factor here. Okay? Because I mean here you have uh, 1 plus root of negative 39 over 2. And here this is twice of that. Of course, this lives in here. This is a, so the first idea is contained in the second idea. But in fact, they're equal. In fact, if you take yeah, uh, the element in the second, uh, the generator of the second idea, one of the generators of the second idea, which is, doesn't look obvious at coming from the first one. You can write it as Remember, 1 plus root of negative 39 over 2 is an element in the range of integers. I can multiply that by 5. That's still going to be in the uh, first idea. Then I can subtract 2 times that. So this will be the second generator of this idea. If you think about it really, this is just, you know, 5 halves of like 1 plus root of negative 39. This is two of that, so their difference is like one half of that. So really, this generator actually belongs to the first idea. So instead of a lot of time, this type of factorization will give something that look a little bit different uh, than you get from other ways, but essentially they're sort of the same thing after the surfer. Okay, so, so and then it also tells you that these, these generators, they're not some have, they're most like, they're no, not, not unique. Okay, so maybe I have time to do another example. Let's go back to the example of Q join I and see what we have. So this is my F. My OF is just the join I. Okay, I want to take R to be just I, and the minimum polynomial in this case is x squared minus 1. Excuse me, x squared plus 1. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, okay, so for P equals 2, I want to know that this is actually, because my generator really generates all of OF, so the theorem the factorization theorem I had earlier, so th this theorem here, actually works for all the prime p. So for p equals 2, what we see is the following. So I have my hx bar, which is x squared plus 1, but this is congruent to x squared plus 2x plus 1, and this is x plus 1 squared, mod 2. <coughs> And what this tells me in terms of factorization is that the ideal 2 in this uh, Renew Gaussian integers is just i plus 1 squared. Earlier on, we talked about this as 2 is actually, I actually did write this, so squared times was a negative i, right? So this is a unit. Once you multiply, something with a unit, it doesn't really change what the ideal is. So that when you take ideals, this unit will kind of go away. So this is somehow how it agrees with our original one, except that we're off by a unit. Of course, the original one, maybe you can get it more precise with the units. For a prime key of 4k plus 3, now I have I want to solve this mod p, uh, but oh, so, so, note that negative one is not a square mod p. So this is in fact irreducible mod p. Okay, I'm just going to take this as a fact. You can. 
But you can deduce this from the, the order of, look at the order of this, because this is R. Okay, uh, this is R. No, this, is, this is not divisible by, not divisible by four, basically. That's what's happening. The order is P minus one. So in this case, prime P, it's just P comma with, I mean, you can still put it in to the formula that we had earlier. So it's going to be I squared plus one, but then you realize this is just zero. So, and of course, zero is a multiple of P. So just a P. In this case, you don't get any sort of additional factorizations. And for P of type, 4k plus 1, this will give me, so in this case, when you model the 4k plus 1 type prime, x, there's negative 1 is a square root, it's a square in mod p, so you can have it like alpha x plus alpha, or some alpha such that alpha square is negative one mod p. <coughs> okay, and in this case, you should get this. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So leave it like this. Okay, but it's not, I mean, it will require some work to show that this is actually equal to some u plus i, uh, alpha is, alpha is i. It will require some work to show this is actually a principal idea. You can find a u plus i b such that, I guess, u squared plus b squared equals p. So therefore, for p is a multiple of this one. Oh, sorry, this is a, ah, what am I writing? R <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I want this one. Right, that's better, right? Oh, I should use R, but maybe I use another now. Yeah, I should use another L. It's a bit confusing. It's called it beta. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> In a theorem, because in a theorem it was like i is r. Anyway, and of course the, the relation between beta and at u and v, you kind of see from here that uh, probably you can see this from because i beta. If you take v times i beta, you get i v plus beta v. So better beta v is congruent to u mod p, as it turns out. Maybe we can do an example, really quick example. So, so let's say p equals 13. Okay. So, so what is h bar x? Is x squared plus 1? It's the same as x squared minus 25? Right? 1 plus 25 is 26, right? This is x plus 5, x minus 5. Therefore, you have 13 equals to 13, i plus 5, 13, i, plus, i minus 5. Okay? So on the other hand, you know this, this factor has 2 plus 3i, 2 minus 3i. So which is which? So let's see. I think this. I think these two are equal. Uh, here's why. Claim thirteen i five is equal to two plus three i. Okay. So why is that? <coughs> let's maybe show this one. Oh. Yeah. Let's show this one actually belongs here. So. You can do 3 times i plus 5, coming from the first one, and then you subtract 13. 
you get this. And uh, so that so that basically shows that uh, the inclusion this way. And you can show the inclusion the other way by hand, namely 13 is really it's in here, and then i plus 5 is equal to no idea. Uh, actually, I do know. Something like 1 plus i. These two shows the other inclusion. So that's how, so, so. This is how how the theorem compares with the, the factorization we have known before. Are there any questions? Maybe for the last couple of minutes, let me introduce some terms first. Oh, they're already ending. Sorry. <laughs> really quick, a couple of terms. So these things called Ramification. Remember, this is a factorization of the page we had earlier. <coughs> so this is called ramification index. Or ramification degree. So in the factor in the factorization we saw for Q joint so, so these exponents. In the factorization we have over here. For all kinds of things, only this one. This is a. I mean, for most of them, the red, like for each factor, it's a simple factor. Only this one has multiplicity two. So this is called this is a case of <coughs> ramified. This is because the corresponding e is bigger than one. So it's a general. Let me write over here. So F over Q is E. So over here is uh, E equals to. So if E i bigger than one, this is called P i is called ramified. If sum of e i is bigger than one, we say p is ramified. So as long as one of the exponents here is not one, so this prime p is called ramified. Not ramified is called unramified. <coughs> 